In this video, I'm going to take you through my gear origin story, how I got from this to the Sony A7R4. So the first camera that I ever uh, bought, um, this is a gear orientated um, origin story, was this was the Hanamex 35 HS, which is a 35 millimeter point and shoot film camera. Um, my mom or my granddad bought this for me. I'm not sure which, um, when I was probably about eight, nine years old. And I was using it consistently until I was probably about 12, 15, uh, 12 to 14 at most. Um, it's a very simple camera, got no aperture control, no shutter speed control. Have a look at some old images. I think that it's shot at around about a hundredth of a second um, consistently. You have these three controls here, sunny, cloudy with sun, dark and overcast. And well, you might think they probably adjusted the weight balance on a modern camera and film cameras, that's not what it is. This is basically adjusting the aperture, um, depending on how dark or bright the situation was going to be. Um, looking at the old photos, it doesn't tell you what it is. I can't find a manual for it online. Um, I think it runs from about f5.6 to f11. Not certain though. Um, it's 33 millimeter focal length, which is a unusual focal length really, but um, fairly versatile. So yeah, as a kid, I loved shooting with this. Um, the problem that I had as a kid was we didn't have a lot of money. So buying and developing film um, was always an issue. So I'd often shoot some film and it would sit in the fridge for um, weeks and weeks before we could actually take it down to um, the local chemists and get it developed. So I probably lost interest in early high school, sort of 13, 14-ish with that camera. And I didn't really partake in photography for a little while um, until my granddad died when I was 16 and I inherited an SLR from him. And this was the very SLR which I still have to this day. This is my, uh, good glue, uh, my Zenit EM um, Moshfa 80, which I'm assuming is Moscow Olympics 1980 um, special edition, which came with a range of lenses. Um, this one here is the Helios 44M. Yeah, I love this little, uh, this, this camera, but it weighs an absolute ton. I can feel the ache in my shoulder holding it right now. So, I shot this from the age of 16, uh, right through university till I was about 20-ish. Um, finally, at university, I probably stopped shooting much because I was uh, running out of money all the time, basically. Then when I got my uh, first proper job out of uni, I really wanted to purchase a digital DSLR, um, but I couldn't afford it. Um, I think at the time, I was earning about 14, 15,000 pound a year, and the, um, might have even been less, and the best, the basic digital DSLRs I could get from the local camera shop were running in at about 14, 1500 pounds with a kit lens. Um, better ones were a lot more than that. So I plumped for a different um, film SLR. So I ended up with the Canon EOS 300 um, with the kit lens 28 to 90 millimeter, which very, very lightweight, complete opposite of the Zenit. Um, was a perfect camera for taking out for the day, day trips, that sort of thing. Fits in a nice little bag with a load of film. Good little camera, I did love it. And what it had above all things um, was autofocus, which I hadn't really had before. Um, bit of a game changer really in how you do things. Yeah, so I shot with this probably until from 2001 to probably about 2004, 2005, at which point photography just drifted out of my life really. Um, I couldn't afford to keep developing the filament stuff, was starting to build a life and that sort of thing, taking on expenses, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, so photography died for a bit for me. And then in 2010, a bit of a personal thing, um, my wife and I had um, twin boys, Tom and Clark, who were um, born stillborn. And I went into a bit of an emotional downward spiral at that point in time. And uh, that was in September. And by the end of the year, as a Christmas present, uh, my wife bought me the Finepix S4000 uh, from Fujifilm. Um, as she was hoping basically that if she could revive an old hobby for me, she would um, help me to pull myself back out of myself really. Um, and it did, it worked. This was a great little camera. Um, went as wide as 24, um, as far as 37,000 millimeters. It didn't, I don't know what, it, what measurement it actually goes to. Um, the camera's kicking around somewhere, but this is just the box. Um, Bridge camera, um, relatively good manual controls, image quality was okay. 
I shot with this for about a year and a half, I think, two years maybe, um, before I decided that I wanted a hot shoe um, so I could mount a flash, um, try and get a bit more, a bit more full manual controls um, and hopefully a bit better image quality. This is where they produced nice enough images in the centre. It had a like, sort of a painterly quality around the edges. Um, it's hard to explain. I'll see if I can find some more samples. Um, so I switched to the Fujifilm Finepix HS30AXR. The main reason I stuck with Fujifilm because there were other options was because they used to roll out firmware updates constantly and they always improved the camera. Um, so that lent with a bit of brand loyalty. And also there was a, um, a website called My Fine Picks um, that was on, um, which Fuji used to sponsor and run and have image competitions and things on it. Um, but it was like an early Facebook group um, and it was absolutely um, supportive, full of really intelligent people. Um, people who really loved their photography and weren't snobby about it. It was absolutely, it was a great community to be part of. And by continuing to buy FinePix cameras, um, you could continue to submit to it, even though they did actually allow you to submit without using off-brand cameras as well. Um, I don't know why they killed it in the end, because I think it was an absolutely amazing um, marketing um, strategy to support that community. Um, and occasionally I still come across the odd person who was in the My FinePix community. If you were, let me know in the comments below. But anyway, this camera was a great camera. Um, again, didn't weigh a lot. Great focal range. Um, ran from 24 to about 900 mils, I think. Equivalent, full frame equivalent. 16 megapixels. Really nice and sharp. Lens was like a 4.2, I think. Or 4, F4, something like that. Through to F5.6, I think. Um, so it was a really decent camera to use. Um, still got it. These cameras are absolutely awesome cameras for beginners and for people trying to learn photography, full manual controls, etc. Um, they go for very little on eBay, which is why I've still got mine. It's worth more to me than the money free value that you can get for it. So in this video, I'm sticking to basically the cameras that um, mattered to me. There were lots of little cameras that I had over time. I had lots of little point and shoot uh, digital cameras. I picked up the odd film camera. I um, I had a Leica M6 that I bought in a charity shop um, for not a lot of money once upon a time. Not realising myself how much it was worth, so I sold it um, because it wasn't worth that much to me, so I'd rather have the money at the time. Um, so after the Fujifilm HS30 AXR, I moved on to um, interchangeable cameras for the first time. Interchangeable digital cameras for the first time. And I started off with a Pentax KS2, which I bought basically off the spec sheet. Um, I was looking at what I could get, bang for buck, and um, based on specs alone, it seemed like it offered an awful lot more than the entry level Canons and Nikons. Um, I felt like I was buying um, something that was equivalent to an enthusiast Canon or Nikon versus a beginner Canon or Nikon for beginner money. Um, and that was an amazing camera. Um, I loved that camera. Uh, the flippy screen on it was the best flippy screen I've ever used. The image quality of the screen was really good as well. I think it was only a 20 megapixel sensor, but they were really sharp and the low light performance was really good. The camera was really small and weighed next to nothing, um, which as a young guy at this time, I had a, uh, a toddler um, going out for day trips and stuff. It was amazing to have a, a camera that, that was that good that could fit on my hip um, and I could still pick a kid up and swing him around and stuff when I needed to. Um, push on the swing, go on the slides and all that sort of stuff and not worry about the weight of the camera being it chore and drag me down. Came with two lenses, the 18 to 50 um, RE lens, which collapses waterproof as well, weather, weather sealed, uh, not waterproof, weather sealed, um, along with the 50 to 200, also weather sealed. So it's a family camera for day trips and stuff in the UK. That was like the most perfect camera you could imagine. After a while, I started getting interested in uh, studio photography. So I uh, had a day where I got a lot of families together and I did my first studio session on the uh, KS2. Um, and yeah, that, that ignited in me a, a love of um, studio photography really and uh, studio portraiture. And uh, I used that camera for a little while for um, hobby stuff, stuff that didn't matter, people weren't paying me, that sort of thing. When people started to pay me, I felt you've got to have a second body in case on the day one fails. And I picked up a Pentax K3, um, which was an excellent tool. Never loved it like I loved the KS2, um, which is going to make the next thing seem a little bit odd. Um, so I used both those cameras side by side when I was starting to do studio photography and stuff, both APS-C cameras. My lens collection was starting to build um, quite drastically at this point in time. Um, and then 
My wife bought me a silver Pentax K1 um, full frame, which was like a game changing thing for me. Um, so I couldn't justify keeping three cameras and I chose to get rid of the Pentax KS2 because I felt that the K3 was a more useful tool when you were doing paid work because of having dual cards more than anything else. Um, it was a mistake in hindsight. I would rather have kept the KS2 with its flippy screen. It would have been more useful overall and I had more of an emotional attachment to it. But anyway, I used the Pentax system up until 2021, late, late 2020, early 2021, I picked up a Sony A7 III um, because where I felt the Pentax system was letting me down was um, in studio work, I was shooting a lot of kids running around like maniacs um, and the autofocus just couldn't keep up. So you'd do your session and some of the best photos were just a little bit out. I became very good in Photoshop of just bringing them back just enough that they would be passable because Contrary to the internet's belief, actually um, printing is more forgiving of slightly missed focus than um, the screen is, in my opinion. Um, sure, some of you might want to disagree with that. Um, feel free to let me know below. But uh, yeah, for me, printing is much more forgivable than forgiving. Sorry, of slightly missed focus than um, screen is. But anyway, I felt like I was I was often having to choose the second best expression and the expressions, all that really matters in portraiture. Um, as much as you want to study lighting and stuff, the expression is what really matters. So I thought I'll give this Sony system a go. So I bought the Sony A7 III and I picked up a Tamron 28-75 f 2.8 lens, um, which is budget sort of uh, version of the classic 24-70 um, Just to give it a go and I used it side by side with the uh, Pentax um, for f f five or six studio sessions, a um, bit of few, few day trips and things like that. And all of the ergonomics were never as good. Um, the keep that rate was just night and day. Um, the IO focus was better than expected um, and it had some pretty good reviews. So in the end, I let go of all my Pentax gear and um, bought a Sony A7R4 as my second body, which is what I'm filming this video on now. Um, so yeah, from a studio point of view and a sort of paid work point of view, I'm currently running with the A7R4 and the A7 III. Um, from a pocketable day-to-day -day point of view, I still use my Fuji XF10, which you probably, if you've seen this channel before, might have seen some street photography videos with that or my review of that itself. Um, next camera for me, I love to buy a Sony A1, um, but it's just not um, cost effective for somebody like me who just does little bit of studio portraiture um, to buy one of those. Now the A7 IV as a replacement to the A7 III um, might be useful because it's got that lovely flippy screen that you had on the uh, Pentax KS2, um, which could be more useful when I'm filming things like this, um, just to see what I'm looking at because I don't use external monitors or anything. I mean, I'd love to know what your first camera was and what were the cameras that you have uh, an emotional attachment to still. Um, let me know in the comments below. And do you sell your cameras or do you just put them all on the shelf and keep them forever? Um, I tend to keep the ones that I have an emotional attachment to if they don't have a massive financial value or a significant financial value, um, in which case I have to be realistic and let them go. Um, anyway, thanks for listening and I'll speak to you soon.